Hey guys, thanks so much for clicking on this video. My name is Chris. Finally, we have enough movie news so I can bring you a side flick. Some of the stuff we're going to be talking about here today is hopefully the last time we have to mention the Will Smith Oscar situation because he recently just got officially banned for the Oscars. I want to talk about what that'll do to his career. We got some toy leaks and promotional looks of Thor Love and Thunder giving us our first real good look at Christian Bale as the villain in this movie and there's controversial opinions. Brie Larson joined joins Fast and Furious 10, Jurassic World going crazy with their villain dinosaur, that along with so much more. So I'm gonna need you guys to give me your opinions down below with everything we discuss here today. Always love hearing everyone's different point of view on the movie news, but also don't be forgetting, hit that subscribe button, man. All right, so jumping into our first movie news story here today, it's been a while since we've talked about a movie that is smaller, but deserves a little bit of the spotlight. What I discuss in here has it, Jeffrey Dean Morgan will battle an evil ventriloquist doll in a horror movie titled Felix. The movie is looking to star Jeffrey D. Morgan and Benjamin Evan Answorth, who you might know from The Haunting of Bly Manor. The film is being described as Super 8 meets Child's Play. You had me a child's play. The full synopsis of the story goes as Charlie and his best friend Jimmy are making a film and dream of becoming big time Hollywood directors when Charlie's father finds an old ventriloquist doll named Felix among his late mother's belongings. Charlie and Jimmy cast the doll as the creepy antagonist through a chain of increasingly sinister and disturbing events. The family discovers that Felix has a mind of his own and it's up to Charlie and Jimmy to rid their family of an anonymous force. Ooh, I cannot wait for this movie, okay? You guys know I am a big fan of Chucky, okay? I love me the Child's Play franchise, but it's not just because of that amazing killer doll. I'm just a sucker for the subgenre of little murderous doll. I got a kick as a kid watching demonic toys. I'm still holding out for the day that Puppet Master gets a high budget reboot. And yes, when we do get movies like Annabelle, it's hard to categorize those as killer doll movies when, when you watch the film, Annabelle really doesn't do anything but turn her head and sit there. I want me a horror movie where the doll is full on standing up, walking, trying to slash some people up, just doing something interesting. And you know what? This sounds like it possibly could be it. Now they could very likely go the route where the doll is just still the entire movie. Where it's just sitting there, turning its head, you look away, it's one spot, then it's another spot. But with them mentioning, it's like child's play and that this doll has a mind of its own. I'm hoping they go full out with this ventriloquist doll that also like, that's just a great premise. You're two kids wanting to make a little movie in your house or backyard. You find this creepy doll and you're like, oh, let's make a creepy doll movie. Except the doll is actually alive. So yeah, I saw this, I heard about it, thought it was interesting, wanted to bring it to your guys' attention. You hear about Jeffrey D. Morgan starring in a killer doll movie. How do you feel about it? Moving on from there, I know people are sick and tired of talking of the Will Smith situation, and I'm right there with you, okay? Feels like everywhere I turn, somebody has an opinion on this situation. But it looks now like we've reached the final chapter of this, unless there's like a surprising post credit scene that we're waiting to get. And basically, it was announced on Friday that the Oscars have come to a decision on the consequences for Will Smith's actions at the Oscars. That outcome being them deciding that Will Smith will be banned from attending the Oscars for the next 10 years. Now there's a little bit of confusion of what this means. Will Smith can still star in a movie and get nominated for an Oscar, but if he does, he's not allowed to show up and claim his award in person. And look, I really want to bring this up just because I think it's such a fascinating look on what will happen now to Will Smith's career, because now you think well, if I can't show up to the Oscars and have my award in person, do my whole speech, do I really want to be making movies that might earn me Oscar recognition? Like, he has this movie up and coming where he's set to be playing a slave, and that was getting a lot of Oscar attention. I believe that's supposed to be coming out this year, and I wonder, you know, if it's as good as his performance as King Richard, will he even be nominated for the Oscars knowing that he can't attend? And you might think, well, that's perfectly fine. Will Smith has had a very diverse career. He's done action movies, comedies, serious films. The man can do it all. Well, we've heard already so many other studios put their Will Smith movie on hold. We had Bad Boys 4 that has now been put on hold pending this whole Will Smith situation. Netflix was having a movie called Fast and Loose that was starring Will Smith that again has been put on hold. And even recently they were trying to sell the rights to a Will Smith biopic so you can have a movie about his life and now no one is really wanting to buy those rights. So the man can't even go out and make a silly fun movie just because everyone wants to distance themselves from him. Personally, I I feel like we will see a break from Will Smith stuff for a while, but I have to imagine the man will come 
come back into the movie spotlight in like two or three years. But it will mainly be like action films or comedies. I can't really see him wanting to do some serious stuff. I just think it's insane the repercussions that one slap had on his entire career when there's people in Hollywood that have done far worse and are still getting roles or some sort of recognition. But this is where I throw it off to you guys. What do you think will be of the career for Will Smith? Can he bounce back from this? Will he bounce back? And if he does, will it be with these action comedies or will he just continue making Oscar-like movies? Really curious to hear what you guys think. One movie that's been kind of silent for a while, but I'm sure a lot of us are really anticipating is Jurassic World Dominion. This is essentially the end game for the Jurassic Park franchise, bringing the old and new characters all into one film. And well, Empire Magazine went ahead and released a couple of photos and information about what we could expect from the film. And I just have to read you the description for the main dinosaur villain in this movie because you're like, what? So if you haven't noticed by now, in the Jurassic World series, they like to have a main villain dinosaur. Whether it's a genetically modified dinosaur hybrid, like the Indominus Rex in the first movie, that I think is still my favorite from this new series. Then you have the Endoraptor from Fallen Kingdom, and now for Jurassic World Dominion, it's going to be this dinosaur called the Gigantosaurus, which was a real dinosaur in our history that wasn't really genetically combined or hybrided up with a bunch of other dinosaurs. And this is what Colin Trevorrow, the director of Jurassic World Dominion had to say about choosing this dinosaur to be the main villain. I wanted something that felt like the Joker. It just wants to watch the world burn. Kill me? I cannot wait now for the performance behind the Joker dinosaur in Jurassic World Dominion. See, my father was a dinosaur. A hungry one. He was eating up all the raptors in town. Why so scaly? I think that is like the most interesting description that you could have given to this dinosaur that it wants to watch the world burn. But who knows? Maybe when we watch the movie, we'll actually understand what he means. I have to imagine that it's just a dinosaur that maybe doesn't necessarily kill for food, but that just does things out of pure joy and chaos. That's one thing that has been lacking for me in the Jurassic World Dominion franchise is there just really hasn't been enough bodies dropping or just dinosaur carnage on humans, which maybe I understand. It feels like it's leaning a little bit more towards the family friendly aspect, but I kind of miss when Jurassic World wasn't afraid to just straight up take down some people. But you guys hear about this description for the Jurassic World dinosaurs. How do you feel about it? And what do you think a Joker dinosaur could mean? Moving on here, we have an update on the Fast and Furious franchise. Everyone knows Vin Diesel is gearing up for the final two Fast and Furious movies. And over the past couple of months, he's been announcing some of the newer cast members attached to the film. We have Jason Momoa, who's said to be playing the villain of the movie. They also went ahead and added Daniela Melanquar, who played Ratcatcher 2 in The Suicide Squad. And now here, another member of the Familia, Vin Diesel announced Brie Larson has joined Fast and Furious 10. He took to his Instagram to make this announcement saying exactly, yeah, yeah, yeah. You see, the angel over my shoulder cracking me up. You say to yourself, this Captain Marvel. Clearly, there is a love and laughter in this image. What you don't see, however, is the character you will be introduced to in Fast 10. You have no idea how timeless and amazing she will be in our mythology. Beyond your beauty, her intellect, her Oscar. Haha, -ha, this is profound soul who will add something you might not have expected, but yearn for. Welcome to the family, Brie. And look, a couple of things here. I never really thought I would see someone like Brie Larson joining the Fast and Furious franchise. I know there's a whole weird subsection of movie YouTube that have like this hate boner for Brie Larson, I am not in that group. Before Brie Larson was Captain Marvel and she got all that unwanted attention, I was already loving Brie Larson and her performances, specifically her role in The Room. That movie really showed me what she was capable of and as Captain Marvel, I like her just fine. I wish the movie itself and maybe some of the story points could be better, but I still very much respect this actress and so it's just kind of funny that she went ahead and joined Fast and Furious and I wonder exactly what role she could play. Like, my mind goes straight to like the sister of Charlie's Theron, but maybe she'll be good since these movies always have to deal with like surprising relative twist and family. She must be someone important because even in this description Vin Diesel made saying that she's going to rich in their mythology, which 
It's hard to think Fast and Furious has a mythology. Look, at the end of it, it's never wrong to add talent to your franchise, and Brie Larson is definitely a talent to be added. I'm just hoping that these two movies really go ahead and end this franchise on a high note without getting too ridiculous, because Fast 9 was the first Fast and Furious movie in like a long time that I just didn't enjoy that much. But I throw it off to you guys. You hear Brie Larson has officially joined Fast and Furious 10. How does that make you feel? And any thoughts and theories to who she could be playing? Bringing it here to Thor Love and Thunder, we have recently gotten some toy leaks that went ahead and showed us our first look to something a lot of us have been wondering. What is Christian Bale going to be looking like as Gore the God Butcher and uh... These toys ain't that pretty. So one, these are Marvel Legend figures, and if you don't know about Marvel Legends, they like to be as accurate as possible to what is gonna be depicted in the movie. So over here, we have Valkyrie that's being titled King Valkyrie, since she is now the King of Asgard. I love that, along with her black and white suit. That looks really clean. Star-Lord, aka Mario, looks just as you would expect. Up here then, we have Groot, who is still a teenager. Boy, Marvel, when are you gonna turn Groot into an adult? And then Jane Foster, Natalie Portman's character, titled Mighty Thor. Her costume also looking pretty good. And then before we get to the Christian Bale figure, we have here two Chris Hemsworth figures as Thor. One Mark Ravenger Thor, which if you don't remember, that's kind of like the Guardian group and he does have that red jacket. So I guess he just becomes an honorary Ravenger. I like how some people saying this looks like it would be a WWE toy, which yeah, definitely does. But moving over here to Thor's new suit for this movie, I, I it's still something I'm gonna have to get used to, man. That's a lot of gold and that's a bold helmet. Maybe it'll actually look really good once the visual effects are put in place and it's in motion doing whatever it does. But I gotta admit, like, I, this is gonna be a look I'm really gonna have to get used to. And so will fans of Gore the God Butcher, because right here, this toy is not really doing my boy Christian Bale any favors. It really just looks like Voldemort if he had plastic surgery and finally got a nose. Luckily, though, after some time, people went ahead and found pictures of the side of the box, so we could see exactly what it'll look like in the movie and it does look better than what the toy was presenting us with i actually don't mind this look at all i like some of these like scars they have running down his face you could definitely see christian bale's features in this character but there's still a handful of marvel fans that are kind of disappointed with this look since it just doesn't really resemble gore from the comics when he has like this sort of flat inhuman like nose but then they would have really had to have cgi'd his face and that effect would have been so noticeable to me throughout the whole movie so I actually don't mind this and Christian Bale can give out a good performance just using his natural face but really at the end of it I just want a damn trailer for this movie like right now I think it's broken the record of a Marvel film that hasn't gotten a trailer but that is close to release this movie is like three months away and we haven't seen anything and to put that in perspective for you the first time we got a Thor Ragnarok trailer was eight months before the movie was coming out I have to assume Marvel's just focusing on multiverse of madness and once the week weekend hits that that movie's coming out that's when they'll release the Thor trailer. But you guys see these looks for Thor Love and Thunder. What do you make of it? Do you like the look? Can you live with it? Or are you just gonna wait to see it in the trailer or in the actual movie? But that is all the movie news we currently have going on right now, guys. I wanna thank you so much for taking time out of your day to watch me talk some movies. Don't forget to hit that like button. Subscribe if you haven't already. Follow me on my other social medias on TikTok at 3C Films or on Twitter at 3C Films. But as always, I'm Chris. Take care.